I'm ready to jump in. I love messed up stories like this. Of course, the crime is not good, but it's like the story is what draws you in. Because it's... It's... Unbelievable that you think it's... Like a dream. You know? But... We're gonna watch this. This is Lee Ki Young. Would you peg him for a serial killer? On Christmas Day, 2022. His girlfriend found a dead man's body hidden in his closet. From there, more sickening revelations followed. Lee Ki Young has been making the headlines throughout South Korea. How many people did he kill? Where is his missing girlfriend? And how did he live a double life for so long? And can a pretty face really distract people from- That was always my question. Like, how are you able to live life like that? Double life, like- deep down you're a killer and then you're keeping up this act of this k-pop star he has to be really freaking smart to be able to like go for so long there's so many people that are extremely intelligent that get away with things like that well, from the heinous nature of its owner in lee's case his looks really worked in his favor Perhaps there's a lesson to be learned here. This is the full story of Lee Ki Young. It was Christmas Day, 2022, and Lee Ki Young's neighbors could smell a strong rose perfume coming through their bathroom vent. They thought, nice, he's finally doing something about the smoking. Lee would smoke a lot in his apartment, and his neighbors were tired of smelling the smoke traveling through the vent. Perhaps this was a bit of Christmas neighborly spirit coming from their recent neighbor, Lee. But on the same day, Lee's girlfriend, who was home alone, went into his closet to get some cat food. She'd recently moved in with him, and she was starting to be useful around the house. So she opened the closet doors, which were creepily tied with a rope, and inside, she found a dead man's body. She immediately called the police, simply saying, there is a body in the closet at my boyfriend's house. Within minutes, a few officers were at the apartment. They retrieved the body and identified him as a taxi driver in his 60s. Five days before, his children had reported him missing. How had the body been in Lee's home for five days without anyone noticing it? The police immediately questioned Lee's girlfriend about the night of December 20th. That was five days before, and everyone was certain Lee was the killer. It turns out that on that evening, Lee and his girlfriend went out drinking with her parents, an opportunity to get to know the parents better and show them that he was committed to their daughter. But Lee drank quite a lot that evening, and he was unfit to drive. He didn't care about that, though. At the end of the evening, he bid his loved ones farewell and hopped into his car. This wasn't his first time DUIing. He had been caught and arrested twice before for this exact reason. He'd even received probation, and on December 20th, his license was still suspended. So what he did was, in a way, twice as illegal. If he was caught, he would face an even tougher punishment. Guess what Lee did? Yep, he got into an accident. Drunk and careless, Lee turned right on a red light, completely overlooking the incoming taxi. The taxi crashed into his car, and both cars were brought to a halt. The two men got out to try and find a solution. The taxi driver was upset, but not particularly angry. His job was to drive, and he'd seen his fair share of inebriated drivers. So when Lee offered him some cash for his troubles, he agreed. You see, in South Korea, it's quite common for people to solve car accidents this way. They avoid reporting the incident to the police and getting their insurance involved. For Lee, this was mandatory. If the police found out he'd been driving under the influence again, and with his license suspended, there would be huge consequences. When the taxi driver agreed, Lee said that he actually didn't have any money on him. He asked the driver to follow him home, and he agreed. You might ask why the taxi driver followed Lee home in the first place. Well, Lee promised he had loads of cash back home. He didn't offer the driver an exact sum, he just tempted him with lots of money. So the driver got in the elevator with Lee, hoping that he could make more than enough bucks to cover his car damage, and then some. Here's the two of them in Lee's elevator. Twenty minutes later, Lee took the elevator downstairs, by himself. Yeah, it 
took him less than 20 minutes to kill the driver and put his body in the closet. Lee didn't have any cash at home. He'd been lying to the taxi driver all along. Okay, so... Because in that little basket that they just shown us, like with the shoes, there's a lot of shoes. So what does he do with the body? Does he just leave it there? Like a sloppy killer? Like... But in the closet, though. <laughs> like, anywhere else but... Okay. When he got to his home, Lee killed him with a blunt object and quickly hid his body. Just as quickly, he went downstairs to dispose of the taxi. But he had a few things to do first. Lee took out an online credit loan of 50 million won using the driver's cell phone, ID card, and credit card. He also pretended to be a victim by sending text messages such as, Dad is busy to Mr. B's family. Then, he abandoned the taxi in a nearby vacant lot and deleted its black box record. Between December 20th and 25th, Lee used the money he'd gotten in the taxi driver's name to buy his girlfriend an expensive ring and take her to a luxurious hotel. And there, she was thinking she had a good boyfriend. On December 29th, Lee was finally taken into custody. This was only the tip of the iceberg. The very strange case of Lee Ki Young was only getting started. The detectives, of course, questioned Lee about the body in his closet and asked him to tell his version of the events. Lee claimed that he invited the taxi driver to his apartment to settle the accident, but when they got there, the driver was asking much more than he promised him. When Lee said he didn't have that kind of money, the driver threatened to call the police. Lee panicked, as he was already in a bit of a car trouble with the police, so he decided to off him and hide him in the closet. The police weren't really buying that story, and their intuition was right. Lee would prove to be a narcissistic sociopath and a compulsive liar. The first thing that stood out to the police was that Lee was living in an apartment that was under someone else's name, a woman in her 50s known as Miss J. Here's the catch. When the police ran her name through the system, they found out she was missing. He I knew I wanted to see it so bad. He killed her and lived off of her name. But I have so much questions. Like how? How? What did you just like lie and say like oh we're a couple? That's it? That okay. She'd been missing since August 2022. When they confronted Lee with this information, he said, Oh, yeah, I killed her. It turns out that Lee used to date this woman, and that he once moved in with her. She was two decades his senior, and she was sort of a sugar mommy to him. She got him expensive presents, took him on lavish trips, and invited him into her home. But after they had a nasty fight, Lee killed her and told the police he threw her into the river. This is why Lee got nicknamed the real parasite psychopath. Remember that South Korean movie, The Parasite, where a poor family moves into a rich family's home and they slowly suck the life out of them? I mean, quite literally. In many ways, this is what Lee did to Miss J. It's even more uncanny when you think they were only together for four months. How do you take someone's money, house, and life in just four months? Had Lee done this before? And here's where it gets extra weird. When Lee told the police he'd thrown Miss J's body into the river, they started an immediate search. This was tough. It was January 2023. The river was frozen and the visibility was super low. Days passed without no results, so they brought Lee into the interrogation room again. When they asked him for specific details, he said he didn't actually throw her into the river. He buried her in a shallow grave on the riverbank. The detectives organized a search party once more, but to no avail. The third time, they brought Lee with them. He would take them to the exact location of Miss J's body. This was the first time Lee's face was filmed by the media. Soon, it was connected to older photos of him. I've been thinking a lot about the unimaginable situations families in Afghanistan, Syria, and other crises. You see, there's a law in South Korea that gives photo rights even to killers and murder suspects. So if the killer doesn't give permission for his photo to become public, it won't. 
Lee took advantage of this law, so the police kept his identity hidden until that day. In early January 2023, Lee Ki Young became a huge figure, and not just because he shared the same name with a famous South Korean actor. People were now amazed at how a good-looking 31-year-old guy could commit such heinous crimes and blatantly admit to them. Well, here's a revelation for us all. Monsters don't usually look like monsters. That's what makes them so scary. We like to think that a psychopathic killer is easy to spot. Exactly, just like a normal person can turn out a psycho. You never know who's really crazy in the head because they look normal. That's why... I don't know where I was going with that, but you get it. Normal people can turn out to be that way because you never really suspect them. This way we can feel safe, knowing we would know to stay away from them. Mm -hmm. But this is exactly how serial killers become serial. They hide in plain sight, look like your everyday neighbor, and sometimes they're even charming or cute, except when they're not. Just look at Jeffrey Dahmer or Ted Bundy. Were they monstrous looking? When Lee accepted to go with the police and reveal the location of the body, he said, this is my last gift to the police. Lee thinks he's above the police and that he's in control of the situation, but the police still didn't retrieve Miss J's body. Did Lee not remember the location, or was he sending them on a wild goose chase again? Anyway, the police continued the investigation into Lee's horrible past. The police discovered that, just like in the taxi driver's case, Lee pretended to be Miss J. He logged into her Facebook account, changed her profile picture several times, and made the odd comments now and then to make it look like she was still alive. And when her relatives called her, Lee would text them from her phone, claiming she was busy or going through difficult times and couldn't speak on the phone. Lee had also taken a loan under Miss J's name, living lavishly off of his dead girlfriend, but at the time of Miss J's murder, the police unearthed that Lee owed her a staggering $200,000. He mm, promised her mm, he'd mm, pay mm. her back, but he was nowhere near returning that sum. Perhaps he never really intended to pay her back. Then the police discovered something else. Just before Christmas, or a few days after murdering the taxi driver, Lee was out and about, eating at a restaurant with friends. But then, when the police tracked his friends down, they discovered something else. They didn't even know Lee. That day, he entered a restaurant where they were having a drink, and he offered them free steak and booze if they sat with him at a different restaurant. This was a group of men in their early 20s. I mean, of course they said yes. Why wouldn't you accept a free meal during the winter holidays? During their awkward meal, Lee told them a million bogus stories, including that he was a very rich kid whose family owned several buildings, and he virtually didn't know what to do with his money. Talk about compulsive lying and delusions of grandeur. Eventually, the meal got pretty weird. Lee told the six men that he could pay each millions of dollars if they would do something for them. Would they kill someone for millions of dollars, he asked. The guys cut the dinner short. Lee was left alone to pay for the meal. Minutes later, CCTV shows him outside the restaurant, getting into a fight with the same group of friends. When the police spoke to the six men about Lee, they said he was impossible to talk to, like he was stuck in his own little world. And it's about to get even creepier. Lee Ki Young was only 31 years old at the time of his arrest, but as the police looked into his past, they discovered something else. He'd been married. Twice. In 2018, he married his second wife, and by this time, he already had a child from his first marriage. But within a year, they would also get divorced. This is weird. Not just because he burned both his marriages really fast, but because the police couldn't tell how he had the money for the weddings. Both of his weddings were, much like traditional Korean weddings, pretty darn expensive. Luxurious venues and giant cakes included. But Lee's family wasn't rich, and he never seemed to have a job. His family wasn't even supporting him financially. So how on earth did Lee get so much money? Did he parasite his ex-wives too? Season to death the ball with 25% off site-wide at 
And when the detectives looked into the child from another marriage story, they discovered Lee never had any children. He was just talking about his friend's son as if he was his own. The lies never seemed to end for this one. By now, the police were worried that Lee had much more victims that he wasn't talking about, so they proceeded to track his every phone conversation in 2022. They discovered that Lee had been in contact with 380 people. And that's a lot of people to talk to in one year, more than one person a day. And most of the conversations that Lee had with these people were to seek validation and fake admiration. He would tell bogus stories, brag about things he didn't have, and act like he was in control of everything. And a lot of the conversations were to seduce women. Between Ms. J and the girlfriend who reported him to the police, Lee had another girlfriend, and even lived with her for one week. This was all in just six months. Look, this case is still very fresh. As of January 2023, the police are still unraveling the full extent of Lee's lies and destructive lifestyle. Miss J's body is yet to be found, and the police are still searching for more bodies, even though they're hoping Lee only killed the two people he confessed about. Lee is being evaluated by psychiatrists. No. It's a good question because the family is not supporting him. He can't sustain a job. So he's probably getting money off of loan sharks or killing off his ex-wives and not telling um, the people of like all of them. Because it says that he's been married twice. Was, it, was this his last time? It's a great question psychiatrist from prison, and reportedly he fits both profiles of narcissistic personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder. These are the two criteria needed for the sociopath label. This means that A. Lee is a psychopathic killer, and B. Thank God he was caught. Such people never really stop killing unless they're arrested or killed. Lee is also thought to have Ripley's syndrome. This is an antisocial personality disorder that involves compulsive grandiose lying, manipulation, lack of empathy, impulsivity, and sometimes criminal behavior. Ripley syndrome patients are also prone to disrespecting others and inflicting harm on anyone, especially their partners. Threats, insults, and even physical violence often go hand in hand with this syndrome. Lee's main motivation seems to be money, and he will do anything to get more money. Well anything except get an honest job. The full picture is slowly coming to life, but it's a grim one. It seems like Lee has been parasiting several people before he actually got to Miss J. But no one knows the full extent of his crimes towards his previous partners. Did his ex-wives and girlfriends suffer the same horrible fate? As the media and the South Korean community are still processing the very weird story of Lee Ki Young, the police are still revealing distressing details. Recently, they discovered four DNA samples in his home, apart from his own. One belonged to the taxi driver, and the other three are all female. Mm -hmm. The police are yet to make the three profiles public. Inside his home and car, the detectives also found a myriad of belongings that weren't his. It turns out that Lee isn't just a liar and a killer, but a pickpocket too. Perhaps he steals from the many women he dates, or perhaps he steals from literally anyone he can. At the moment, the police are being extremely diligent. They're tracking down the owners of these belongings, as well as every single person Lee was in contact with in 2022. They want to make sure that, first of all, they're all alive. Second of all, they might unearth more clues, hopefully no more victims, from Lee's past. Lee is facing life in prison or even the death penalty, but his trial is yet to begin, and we're yet to find out his full and very scary criminal record. Thanks for watching, you guys. What do you think about this case? Do you think there are more victims to be found? I definitely do think that there's more to the story because... I don't know, I just have like this feeling that this, this is not it. And I definitely think giving him life in prison will do him more. I mean, he already lacks empathy, but killing him off won't do anybody. Um, I never agree with when it comes to um, killers, they automatically go to death. But I'm guessing it's the type of crimes that they commit. 
Who knows? 